Every one of us this morning, every one of us is located somewhere between heaven and hell. Some days we feel a little bit closer to heaven. There's those other days, aren't there? Feel a little bit closer to hell. If we hang on to the hope, the hope that is offered to us in the good news of Jesus Christ, then on most days we experience more heaven than we do hell. I'd like to share with you this morning about three people who spent their time somewhere between heaven and hell. The first person is the person that John uh, Tonkin shared with us this morning as we did our uh, lighting of the Advent candles. And in, in, in Isaiah, we hear about, in, in what we read this morning in our liturgy this morning, is the king. It talked about the king. Well, the king was named Ahaz. That's the king who Isaiah was speaking to at that time. Ahaz was a prince at first, of course, and his daddy, his daddy was a really good king, a really good, a really effective and good king of Judea. So Ahaz becomes king when he's 20 years old. And uh, he will actually reign for 16 years. And uh, did you ever, uh, do you ever know what happens when, like, the kids take over the business? How that turns out sometimes. Not every time, but sometimes, uh, you know, dad builds up the business and the kids take over and, and it nosedives. Well, Ahaz, as king, took over the family business of being a king. And... Boy, did he mess that up. He, uh, he, he needed some advice, but he wouldn't take any advice. So on all three people I'm going to talk to you about today, they had three operative words I want you to remember about them. And Ahaz's words were this. I got this. I got this. Has anybody ever given you advice? And you, in your smug response, say, well, I got this. I got this. I, I, I got it. In other words, Ahaz just never learned. His response to the challenges of life was to worship other gods. And in 2022, heading into 2023, there are moments that we get closer to hell because we choose to worship other gods instead of the God who created us and sent his son Jesus and remains with us in our, his spirit. Well, Ahaz, he, he went out on his own. He lost 120,000 soldiers. And then 200,000 men and women were carried off to Assyria because of his ineptness. Because he wouldn't listen. Because he said, I got this. I got this. And he, he went to, uh, Isaiah comes to him and said, you know, give me, he wanted Isaiah to say something. He said, tell me something that's, that's as deep as, as hell, Sheol, and as high as heaven. But, you know, he, he's, Isaiah was going to offer him advice, and it, but, but his response was what? You know, I got this. I got this. But I say, said, nevertheless, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. The Lord will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child. It will give birth to a son, Emmanuel, which Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. The answer for him, a three-word answer for him was God with us. The answer to I got this can be, no, invite God to be with us, to be with us. 
And then there's Paul. You've heard about Paul quite often. And Paul was this uh, guy who was a religious expert. A religious expert. We have any religious experts this morning here? Uh, but you know, I'm, there are some folks that fashion themselves as religious experts. And what a religious, religious, religious expert does in their life today is have aspire to have everyone think and act and worship and do and respond to God in just the way they do. They have all the right answers. And, and Paul would have fit in well into the culture in 2022 going into 2023 because Paul was big into cancel culture. You don't believe what I believe? You don't think the way I think? Fine, I'll eliminate you. And for him, I mean real elimination. Paul's three operative words were, I know this. I know this. I have to admit to you this morning, I find tremendous joy. This is sick. I find tremendous joy in seeing a religious expert slap down. <laughs> that, yeah, I, I do. I do. <laughs> and I hope maybe some of you do too. Oh, man, the problems. But So Paul, Paul goes out and he says, I know this. I know this. I know, I know what God wants. I know what God, God expects. I, I, and uh, God slapped him down. On the word to road to Damascus, he's knocked down. And Jesus says to him, and he witnesses the risen Christ. So why do you persecute me? By persecuting others. At that moment, what Paul did was start to let go of his religion and begin to trust in God as revealed to him in Jesus Christ. He moved from being religious to having a faith. And once he had that faith and understood that it wasn't about rules and regulations and, and who, who was in and who was out, it was about grace and love. And then Paul just couldn't help but spread it. Spread it to anyone who would listen about this, this uh, good news that he had heard. And he was heading toward the power brokers in Rome and was about to try to visit them and tell them this good news. And he wrote to the Romans. And this is how his letter begins. He says, I'm Paul. And a devoted slave of Jesus Christ on assignment. What a transition. What a transition from, I know this, that I'm a devoted slave. And slave, you know, whatever that connotates, be under the assignment of Jesus Christ. Authorized as an apostle, which would be a, a witness to the resurrect Christ to proclaim God's words and acts. I write this letter to all believers in Rome. God's friends, God's friends. Wherever they were in their faith, he called them God's friends. And he goes on to say, you are, who are you who is through this gift and call of Jesus Christ are to be obedient and to trust in Jesus. And if you're gonna trust in Jesus, it's not so much that you're gonna bet on Jesus, it's just that you know that if you act as Jesus taught you to act with this love and with this grace, that you're going to spread God's words just by your actions. Paul got rid of, I know this, and moved instead into, I get this. I get this. He spent some, he was so close the hell in his religion. But then he saw the face of Christ, which is our hope as we look toward heaven and we can, we can have heaven on earth right here and now. We can see the face of Christ in those sitting right next to you. And then finally, 
Joseph. You know Joseph in the Christmas story, don't you? Do you remember um, that uh, we're out of the 60s and 70s, a lot of us, and uh, some of you even go back to the 50s. Remember a guy by the name of Casey Kasem? Casey Kasem, he, he had Ameri America's Top 40 every week. And you remember Casey Kasem, sometimes when he introduced a song, he would, he would say, you know, and he would start with a story about somebody who wrote him something. And, and the answer would always be found in a song, right? So Casey Kasem, you know, imagine he got this letter. And a man writes from Bethlehem in Judea. He said, Dear Casey, I've been married, I, I have been engaged to this woman and we're about to be married. And she's beautiful and I love her. She's my rock. She's everything. I, I just adore her. And she has come to me to tell me that she is with child. And it's not mine. It's not mine. And then she said, well, it's God's. It's God's baby that's coming, and he's going to be the Messiah. The Messiah. What would you do with that? Well, Joseph could have taken a worldly answer to that. In his culture, all he had to do was announce that his, his betrothed, his, the woman he was engaged to, was with child and it wasn't his. He would have, she would have gone down to the town square and she would have been stoned to death. End of the problem, right? No. As Casey would say as he got to the end of the letters, he would say, and the answer to your problem, Joseph, is in a song that came to the top of the charts in 1970 by that supergroup from England, the Beatles. And then the song would go on. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Finish it. Let, let it be. Let it be. There will be your answer. Let it be. And Joseph, in a dream, is told... By God, let it be. Let this happen. Let the Messiah come into the world under your love, under your support of this young woman who was in chi with child, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Let it be. So for all of us this morning who feel like, you know, You've come here this morning saying, you know what? I got this. I know. I know this. I have all the answers. Your answer comes from a song from 1970. Let it be. Let it be. I invite you to join now in song.